So we've got two days before Eliza comes to an event near us soon. Let's go and have a look at the Shardsman calendar, see what's available, see what's about, and see how we're going to get this champion. Pierce the Lord for everyone, designed for Gear 83. Let's get this done. I'll see you in the video. Hello and welcome. I'm Mystical. This is Mystical Gaming. We're back in the Watcher Realms. Now today I wanted to go over Eliza. She's coming to the game soon. We're going to get the summoning event for her or the shard summon. It's not strictly a summoning event. You will summon her when you've got enough shards. It's not as if you just have to pull shards to get her. So it's not like a limited summon or anything like that. Now you will have to summon to get her just the way the events are done. But let's go and have a quick look at her. Have a look at her kit because she looks really good on paper. So if you want to find her, she is not in the gallery. She would be up here, but she's not. So if you want to have a look at her, you come across to the events. You can see her there. That's where the event starts. And if you click on the portrait there, there she comes up in the gallery, which she's sort of not. So I presume she's sort of hidden away in the gallery and then come next week, she'll be visible. So there she is. She's a marksman. She's doing piercing damage. She is designed for gear 83, absolutely 100%. And look at the design they've given her. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, she's not over-sexualized, which is, a, I think, a bonus and a pleasant change. Maybe because she's a lizard, but just love the design. Absolutely fantastic. I love the Quiver of Arrows. I love her animation. Love, for want of a better description, the hair. I want to say oh maybe we'll have a play test later and look at the bow look at that skull in there as well absolutely fantastic and that bow is awesome absolutely brilliant so yeah aesthetically brilliant job you can't fault it it's absolutely awesome now skill kit wise uh, a talent redeployment time minus 20 percent i'm assuming this is to get a redeployed for the timing of gear 83 i don't know i haven't play tested it. it's just my assumption at the moment but as we have a look through a kit it sort of blends that way so uh her initial attack just deals 100 damage to one enemy prioritized airborne units gear 83 uh, ultimate this is where it gets a little bit weird so uh, ultimate when deployed gains invisibility invisibility cannot be targeted and the invisibility lasts for 30 seconds and the ultimate lasts for 30 seconds now when we have a look at the ultimate there's no initial rage and there's no rage requirement to trigger the ultimate it's just when deployed so i'm assuming as soon as this hero is deployed he then gets her ultimates up and running and she's deployed she gains invisibility and increases damage by 70 percent this can only be triggered one time for each deployment so it's not as if it's coming back round. It sounds like you have to retreat her and then place her down again, which I'm assuming, all going well, is why the redeployment time of minus 20 seconds works very well with her. That's my guess. I, I don't know for definite. And then we've got a passive as well. Killing an enemy turns a basic attack into two consecutive strikes. And that lasts for seven seconds. So I don't know whether you can just extend this if that two consecutive strikes within that seven seconds triggers it again or not I don't know I haven't played sister so that's where she is and again she is an archer lord so she gets the faction team members attributes by 10% and importantly you get that rage increase by a tile as well so absolutely fantastic little champion I don't think there have been any bad champions they've done or any that aren't worth going for so on paper straight off the bat she looks phenomenal and definitely worth going for so I'll be going for her and I I would advise everyone else to as well even if i've already got other other archer lords so do i require her probably not will i be going for her absolutely 100 i will be so here's a calendar for her now th this is the only place i've probably seen a little inflation in the game realistically uh the events there are 65 uh, shards available in the events and there's another 40 available in the oracles trials now they are shortening these down slowly. So this is another 10 short from, I think, the last one or definitely the one before that. And then when we look back all the way back to the Pyrus event, we were getting, uh, I think it was around 125 uh, shards available for him. So I think they're trying to find a sweet spot for it, but I think these are still good to do. Still good to do, still 
available for most people to do I think without any issues whatsoever so this is where we are with that so let's have a look at the events we're going to do and the events we want to do so that's me out of the way a little bit so right let's have a look at this there is the summoning the spiritual altar which is happening not next weekend the weekend after so in a fortnight's time then corridor of glory there are 10 shards available in each corridor of glory that gives us 20 do we want to do the corridor of glory absolutely we want to be doing this event remember this also gives us our two spare uh skill crystals as well so we want to make sure we're doing corridor of glory because we do want our skill crystals and they're absolutely fantastic so if we're getting them we may as well get the 20 uh, shards available for that so there we go we're off onto 20 shards straight away brave conquest 15 available but there's not only 15 shards available let's also remember that all things being equal there will be six ancient summoning crystals available as well and we want those so there's another 15 to our tally as well so we're already up to 10 20 25 30 35 straight off the bat now comes the trickier one tales of the smith these are not nice um generically they are split for some reason i don't know why they're split down into two shards and then a three shards so go careful if you're doing the whole event and you're going to smash through it and collect the five in total brilliant go for it but if you're not be wary that they are a two and a three they're split normally in these um events we'll have to wait until the event goes live before we actually see it and find out but essentially that's what happens now the two is useless to you it's absolutely god awful don't use it at all it um even if you get it twice it's still only four and, and you you want your um your count to come in in blocks of five so be wary of that right the other event with the fence we've got is we've got jewel of champions there's five available in each one of those so there's another 10 and we should be looking at getting in those a hundred percent they are just using up your normal daily arena tokens so assuming you get no other ones just use everything you get in a day and i think if you actually use everything you get in a day normally even if you lose every event you can still get these so they're definitely worth getting so we're now up to 10 20 uh, 35 40 45 there and we need another 30 so oracle's trials We've got the normal ones. We've got Lost Legacy, Vault of the Sands, Forgotten Battle Palettes, and then we've got Mystery of Artifacts. So there we go. That is where they are, and there is five in each of them, and you should bank on getting those 20 straight away anyway. So that's where you are. There's another 20 done there. That takes you to just being 10 short, so you are going to have to summon to actually get her. Where you want to summon, that choice is very much up to you, or if you want extra ones, who knows. Now, to get the extra 10. <clears throat> we should be going for <clears throat> the events here anyway. So straight away. The only ones you might not want to go for is, so we've got Arrival of Heroes here and we've got Arrival of Heroes over there. We've got two Arrival of Heroes event and they offer 10 each. So if you want to summon, pick which one you want to go for. No idea on what next weekend's banner is going to be. It might be absolutely fantastic. It might be miserable. Who knows? But you've got the one after that as well. Now, if you wait for the one after that, we will see it ties in with a spiritual altar event as well. So if you're doing the one after that and you plan to do the spiritual altar and the arrival of heroes, you'll be over what you require. You might want to think, well, actually, I can miss out on doing some of the other events that is up to you i would definitely do the corridor of glory I'd definitely try and push on to do the brave conquest events now the brave conquest events you want to save your stamina for the first one so you can smash through that and go up to your 6k you should collect the five uh, shards along the way the second one will be somewhat tighter and harder to do so if you've got any spare stamina then you might want to save it for that second one once you've hit the 6k on your first one the last one would be a little bit easier because halfway through it we go into the mystery of artifacts event and remember you get more points when you're farming i think above about level 15 in amr so if you're doing artifact material raid above level 15 and a greater you're going to get more points for brave conquest so remember that when you're trying to calculate where you want to do and how you want to get it so have a look at that event as well and that is essentially how you're going to get her. Nice and easy to do. The only other thing to, to mention, I suppose, is in the Oracle's Trials, 
first place offers 10, second place offers seven, and third place offers five normally. None of the events are live yet, so I don't know for definite. That is normally what happens, and I haven't heard anything to say that they're changing that. So bear that in mind as well. There are possibilities for you to go for those, but they're not guaranteed. The only way you're gonna to guarantee to do this is to actually do the events and get the ones that are on the events. Anything other than that could be a bonus for you. So. There you go. That's that's this. I, I really strongly recommend going for it. She looks absolutely fantastic. She really does. Haven't played tested her. Looking forward to getting her. Looking forward to chucking her into AMR. So hopefully we'll be able to get her by the end of next week. If I, if I really push for it, maybe I can get her on one of the accounts by the end of next week. That'd be fantastic. And then when we're doing uh, Gear Ray 3, we'll be able to see what she's like in there as well. So that that's sort of the rough plan. Um, and, and that's it really. So thank you very much for me. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe. That helped me out massively. And I'll see you in a video again soon. And make sure you prep properly for this. And talking of prepping, oh, sorry, forgot to mention, absolutely forgot. Um, before these go live, this gives you almost just under a week. So you've got until sort of close of play next Thursday to do some some experience rates. So if you want to do some experience rates uh, or experience dungeons to build up the experience you've got in your pot, then please do that. Make sure you've got that squared away. You don't want to buy your potion with uh, diamonds, so don't go there and it with diamonds they'll either be one available if you haven't used it this week in the uh, dwarven association and if you have used it it'll be refreshed on monday so you can go and get a uh, double experience as well okay so just bear that in mind as well sorry forgot to mention that right that is me done please give the old thumbs up like and subscribe and i'll see you in the video again soon cheers for your time goodbye